This is Twit. So this is an interesting problem, right? And, it, and it's it's for a specific class of user. It's either somebody who you have to be somebody who installs games a lot. Either you install them a lot, maybe you live in a in a multi gamer dwelling, if you will, um, or you host LAN parties semi frequently, or you host LAN parties very often, right. or you're like us, where you benchmark games all day and <clears throat> always on new successive systems. So. Um, Interesting. The, the the interesting setup for this is that when we first got our gigabit fiber internet connection uh, here at the office, mm -hmm. uh, we were able to download from Steam at a, at pretty close to 100 megabytes per second. Over that, a couple of times, right? right. Uh, and and so that was as fast as our gigabit network in the office would go, anyway, more or less. So downloading it and, and copying it off to the to the network attached storage device didn't make a whole lot of sense because it still had to do this like unpacking and reinitialization and stuff anyway so it was actually faster to download it directly from steam <laughs> over the course of the last couple of years what's happened is the speed we get from steam has dropped and it's not our internet connection and it is right. probably some combination of their desire to maybe you know save some money throttle people back a little bit but there's also been a pretty high influx in CPU utilization on Steam. If you've noticed, um, what appears to be happening is that the the uh, security encoding, the encryption coming through of that data is more intense than it was previously. So it's actually a CPU bottleneck to download at really high speeds from uh, from these from these systems. In many that cases, and also we've. Oh, so that just sounds profoundly irritating. <laughs> it is, right? You like f for the entirety of my life, essentially, the internet has been the bottleneck for every interaction I have with the internet, um, and now it was no longer the case. So <laughs> we 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 had seen results, you know, go from that hundred megasecond down to, you know, sometimes fifty, but a lot of times in the teens or the twenties megabytes mm -hmm. per second, and it was like, okay, this was kind of be an interesting project. We had we had played with this once before, you know, several months ago. It had some stability issues where we couldn't figure out what the software exactly configuration needed to look like. Um, and now we had an, another another reason to do it because we had upgraded much of our internal network to 10 gigabit. So now all of a sudden, you know, if we could get those bottlenecks out of the way, we could mm -hmm. really move things forward. So the the idea is fairly simple. You have uh, like a Docker container essentially that you have on the server the the complicated or you have on your network the complicated part is your ip or your your dns kind of has to filter through it you can either do that through manual configuration of a host file basically so that all of the steam cdns point to this local server first instead mm -hmm. of to the actual steam servers um yeah, you can see it there. It's all at steamcache.net. It's call. It's all free, open source for you to download and try and mess around with. Um, so the the idea is pretty simple. Once you have a PC on this network and you have set up the DNS correctly, the first time you download a game to the to through that setup, it will download it from Steam as if you normally would. So the speed would be whatever the slow rate that you're able to get before. Uh, and the next time you install that on another machine or on that machine again, it's already been cached on the on the on the steam cache itself and you'll max out whatever your network capability is in our case um we you know we were using a um a qnap device that allowed us to put a vm on there and run this we had a 10 gigabit nic in it it's a ryzen 7 powered qnap nas uh, a six bay nas um, I think we had a, I think we ended up with a one ter, no two one terabyte Samsung 840 Evo SATA SSDs in RAID zero, so two terabytes of cache that we were able to use with this, and the result is we hit about 250 megabytes per second of downloads on there. And actually, the bottleneck appears to be server side. When you downloaded about 250 megs per second, the Ryzen 7 uh, 1700 CPU seems to be maxing out a single thread of the processor. So again another bottleneck other than network speed because we know our 10 gigabit network could actually exceed that performance. Um, it's it's a really interesting project. Do, the, the average gamer who's at home and plays games on Steam has no need for this because it, you don't, you're not downloading the game multiple times or if you are, right. and you should probably look at what your usage models are. Uh, but if you run a LAN party and you know, you're going to have 
10 guys over or 30 people over, whatever it's going to be uh, at school or something, it might be worth setting one of these up, putting it on the network, and then people who show up don't have a game installed or have, you know, the other reason you might do this is if you had a really small SSD and you were constantly flipping back and forth between games, you know, you would uninstall a couple so you could reinstall a couple and cycle that through. Um, this would speed up that process to some degree, but, you know, you have to have hardware for it. You have to have, uh, you know, a fairly sizable cache in order to do it. So it's it's not a an easy decision to make. But for us, it made sense because we might have four machines a day come online that need to have a bunch of uh, games tested on them. So this this sped things up quite a bit. I, I've had to. Yeah, I, I I don't have to load Steam games onto machines often enough. But I will say it never ceases to amaze me how irritating that is. <laughs> like, even when it's moving it's, fast. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that it's you, you we get spoiled about how fast things can go, and now all of a sudden we just want them to be faster and faster. And then it doesn't help that games are getting enormous, enormously large. Right. You know, we have we have a couple of games that are on the cache that are probably 70, 80 gigs each. Mm -hmm. um, and lots of them are around the 50 gig mark. So it's... Uh, Which is huge. It should take a while. Yeah. No, yes, it's... It's, it's... I mean... Uh, no, oh, I, I... And I would note, these, these Steam caches can also... Apparently, we didn't configure it. It was a little bit... We, we didn't figure it out. We don't download from very often. But they can also cache Uplay or Origin games and even uh, Windows updates. So it might be another use case for you there, too. The Windows updates would be tempting. I actually started downloading the Windows updates files separately uh, yep. when there's something big coming down the pike just to keep myself from going insane. But it's it's amazing. One of the things about getting a gigabit connection like you have or, or we've got a half gig um, synchronous in the office I'm in right now, I've got, in theory, 75 uh, megabits per second, but in reality, closer to 200 megabits per second uh, at home. And it's, mm. you start to realize exactly how many services are throttled. And you start, you know, for example, in the case of Dropbox, I figured out that using the Dropbox sort of application and folder was considerably faster than using the browser in, uh, oh, right. in the office here. Um, and it's, you start to realize like, oh, I can only get 30 megabits out of this. <laughs> I've... <laughs> Where's the rest of my speed? Then you start running trace routes and calling tech support and irritating the hell out of them because they're like, you know, we're still dealing with people with DSL that think a megabit up is a good day. And it's like, I don't care. 